Welcome to Philosophy and Critical Thinking. In today's video, I'll be going through a thought experiment called The Busy Doctor, a thought experiment on declaring a climate emergency. Imagine that there are two doctors walking down the street. They come across a man who has been stabbed and is bleeding to death. The first doctor says that there is no issue at all. He'll be fine and he keeps on walking. The second doctor says, this man's bleeding to death and needs my help, but I'm a bit busy right now. I'll come back in an hour to help him. The question uh, we can ask from this thought experiment is, is there any morally relevant difference between the two doctors? A part of us might want to say that there is a morally relevant difference and that's that one person or one of the doctors is acknowledging that the uh, man is bleeding to death and needs our help and the other one is not. However, when we think about this, the doctor which says he's busy and is going to come back and help him an hour later on, he'll be most likely dead by then. Um, so there seems to be no morally relevant difference between the two doctors in respect to uh, trying to actually help the man. Um, so it seems that the fact that one's acknowledging the issue and the other one isn't seems to not be very relevant in regards to the well-being of the man who's been stabbed. Um, it, there's also one argument we could possibly make is that in, in a weird way, the doctor that's acknowledging the issue is actually morally worse than the doctor that's not acknowledging the issue because we could say well the first doctor is either an idiot or he's crazy or you know uh, something's um, gone on wrong there whereas the doctor is of more sound mind um, so this doctor should know better um, he, he knows there's a problem and isn't willing to do what's necessary to um, help the man um, so in this case uh, acknowledging the issue seems to be irrelevant on the morality between the two doctors. Where this thought experiment can be helpful is by showing that just declaring or just uh, acknowledging that there is an issue is not even good enough, especially if you're not willing to do what's necessary to fix the issue. Um, if you have one group of people declaring an issue and another people group of people not um, de not declaring the issue. Um, if both uh, are not willing to do what's necessary to fix the issue, the fact that one is acknowledging the issue and the other one isn't uh, seems to be irrelevant. And I think we can apply this when we consider governments who are declaring a climate emergency. I'm going to use the standards of um, Australian politics at this stage, but some countries like in the US and in uh, Britain may be able to draw similar analogies. Uh, we're just going over this. The uh, Liberal Party of Australia is our current government, a conservative government, and they do not wish to officially declare a climate emergency. They uh, don't, most of them don't believe that we should call what's going on with climate change the status of an emergency. Whereas the opposition, the Australian Labor Party, do want, want to declare an official climate emergency. De they've declared it themselves and they want their government to officially do so as well. Um, and as a part of that, they want to push for uh, achieving a zero net emissions by 2050. That's the target. Now, we also have another group in Australia and around the world of Extinction Rebellion that also want to declare an official climate emergency um, and want to achieve a zero set emissions by 2025. When we consider the behaviours by the three groups, which one is acting mostly like there is a climate emergency? We'd probably most say that Extinction Rebellion is definitely the one acting mostly like there's a climate emergency because they want the zero net emissions achieved in five years' time. Whereas when we contrast this with the Australian Labor Party, uh, wants this in 30 years time and that's a significant difference in targets there. Uh, so it does raise the question, if the Australian Labor Party 
acknowledges that there is an emergency, um, why are they not joining in on the same kinds of targets? Um, if it's an emergency, we ought to be behaving as if it's an emergency. On the topic of setting zero emissions targets, there's been an interesting thought experiment put forward by George uh, Monbiot from the uh, Guardian Australia, where he puts forward this thought experiment. When firefighters arrive at a burning building, they don't set themselves a target of rescuing three of the five inhabitants. They seek, aware that they may not succeed, to rescue everyone they can. Their aim is to maximise the number of lives they save. In the climate emergency, our aim should be to maximise both the reduction of emissions and the drawing down of carbon dioxide already in the atmosphere. There is no safe level of global heating. Every increment kills. So what George Monbiot is arguing here is that even setting targets seems to be a bit of a confusion if you're recognising that there's an emergency. A the best way to approach an emergency is to do the best that we possibly can and not even ignore this idea of setting these targets. And, um, and, I, and I agree with this. I think this is uh, quite true. Uh, there's a bit of what they call virtue signalling going on with some of these targets. The Labour Party saying a target by 2050. It's like, well, it, this is an emergency and we've got to get onto this right now. And we're reaching the point of no return in the next decade or so, or some climate scientists may even believe we're already at that point, then what's the good of seeing a target which is 30 years from now? Um, we, uh, we've got to get onto this right away if you believe that we are in a climate emergency. So I think the, this is an interesting thing to remember if we're comparing the standards of governments based on whether or not they're acknowledging we are in a climate emergency. If you want more information, you can go onto the website philosophycriticalthinking.com. Also on that website, I have a tutorial on arguments from analogy and thought experiments, which can be helpful in analysing thought experiments such as this one today. If you want to stay tuned for more videos, please subscribe and click the bell. Thanks.